Should I increase the intensity of my cycling training every week? Don't know if you should increase the intensity of your training? The following are some great tips for scientific training. Taking it gradually is an important part of training. In short, as you adapt to training, you need to motivate yourself gradually. Try to find and do something new and fun in every training, set a goal, etc. The next question is, how should I set up goals so that you can reap the fitness benefits without falling into a training plateau? James Sprague explains what is the best approach and why. Unfortunately, there is no one-size-fits-all answer. We cannot simply say that the weekly training workload needs to increase by a certain percentage. However, several key markers can guide when we need to increase the training load. A good way to do this is to look at your power output, an external measurement, and two internal measurements, heart rate and RPE. If in any given session the ratio between power output and HR and RPE increases, then this is a positive change and it is time to increase the training load. The reason it's important to consider heart rate and RPE is that one of the signs of fatigue is a slower heart rate response. So on shorter efforts, it's sometimes hard to get your heart rate up. And if you ignore the RPE, it might seem like a positive change when in fact it's opposite. So now we know how to determine when we need to increase the training load. By how much? So when to increase your workload and how much? First, long endurance rides. On longer rides, I always pay attention to my power output, heart rate and RPE between the first half of the ride and the second half. If there's no significant change between the first half of the ride and the second half, you can go a little longer on your next endurance ride. A good rule of thumb is that if the change of power output, heart rate and RP is less than 5%, you're about the right length for an endurance ride. And if it's more than 5%, you are riding for too long. If you want to start increasing the duration, I'd suggest adding from 30 to 60 minutes and see where your numbers fluctuate. I do not recommend that you intensify your workout by increasing the effort of the equipment. Number two, shared intensive rides. Just like with longer rides, we can use some key metrics to guide how to plan for shorter rides. Usually, when there is no difference in the ratio between power output and HR and RPE from first to last effort, then it's time to move forward with your intensive training program. Once you get to that point, there is room to increase the training load of the intensive course. Number one, you can make the efforts more intense. Number two, you can make the efforts longer at the same intensity. Number three, you can do more efforts. Number four, you can reduce the amount of recovery between efforts. Number five, you can change the efforts, making them more specific. My advice is to only change one of these components at once. Changing more than that is a recipe for disaster. You will likely either not be able to complete the session or will make yourself so tired in the process that it will take multiple days to recover and will end up missing some training. Let's look at each change in turn and see which key metrics might inform making that change. Make the efforts harder. We typically only want to make the efforts harder when two criteria are met. The first is the efforts are already very specific to the demands of your target event and the second, there has been a substantial change in fitness. It may be that you have done an FTP or critical power test and your threshold has changed. That would be a good time to increase the intensity at which you are doing the efforts. I will be explaining how to find your FTP and critical power test in later part of the video. Make the efforts longer, at the same time intensity. This is a nice option to make the efforts more specific. For example, if you are targeting a 25 mile TT, you might want to progressively longer with your threshold style efforts 
or how long you hold your TT position. Do more efforts. This is probably the easiest way to progress an intense session. If you are handing three to three minutes, just fine. Why not add another effort? You'll be surprised at just how hard that additional effort feels. Reduce the amount of recovery between efforts. This change is the best reserved for when you are trying to make the efforts race specific or you are trying to make the efforts more aerobic in nature. Less recovery means those anaerobic pathways don't get the change to recover as much and more stress is placed on the aerobic system. Make the efforts more specific. This is a really nice way to progress your intense sessions as you approach your goals on the racing season. And making efforts more specific will better replicate the event's demands and can help prepare you nicely, both mentally and physically, to go into racing. So when it comes to progressing a cycling training plan, my advice is to be guided by the data rather than just guessing or applying an arbitrary increase. The ratio between power output and HR and RPE will tell you when it's time to move things forward. The exact circumstances and where you are in your training in relation to your goals will inform you how to progress your training. If I had to give one piece of advice, it would certainly be to only change one thing at a time. If you would like to know more information or tips on cycling, please follow Jelly New official channel.